man, finally here. Unbelievable. So good afternoon, everyone. First of all, let me begin by ooh, telling my dear fellow graduates how cute you guys look in those outfits. Honestly, I've been wanting to tell you all day. This wasn't part of my speech, but you know, I just had to tell you. So it was a perfect opportunity. So let me start with the obvious and tell you how um, glad I am to be here. And I want to thank my teachers, uh, the student development staff for doing an amazing job, and also my dear peers for providing me with this wonderful opportunity to be standing here and representing the graduating class of December 2016. I believe we all deserve a round of applause for co completing this stage of our life. So. On the other hand, uh, we as graduates have been staying up all night for the past week or so and trying to hack into the computer system as a last chance to, you know, raise our marks up. But unfortunately, the IT department, you guys right there, man, they're way too strong and they took on our attacks and defeated us. But, but, as your valedictorian, I arrange for the guys that are sitting right there, the future graduates of Columbia, to take on our project and defeat the IT department for next semester. So speaking of unfinished projects and mistakes of the past, I've got some serious stuff to talk to you all about. And um, you guys can relax. We're not redoing ISVs or anything. It's going to be fine. But what I'm going to be telling you is serious at the global level. Being an Iranian citizen hasn't always been easy for me. While I'm proud of my country and my culture, it certainly hasn't proven to be anything but hassle on my passport. Um, when I applied for financial aid to my dream university, Yale, I experienced quite a shock. After a year of research and absolute certainty that my citizenship wouldn't exclude me from applying, I couldn't find Iran on the list of eligible countries through the usual online application. At that moment, it felt like a bucket of ice water was poured on my head. It was once I contacted Yale directly that they explained that I was fortunately still eligible to apply, but had to fill out a separate form because of my citizenship and the sanctions placed upon my country. It might not seem like a big deal now, but um, since I was still able to apply, but try and put yourself in my situation. There was a feeling of being singled out, a feeling of being different. I wish I could say that was the only time I felt this way, but I would be lying. Every time I walk through the airport, passport in hand, I try my best to hide the cover for fear, for fear of being misjudged because of my background. I wish I could say this has only been a feeling, but then again, I would be lying. For the past three years, my mother has applied four times to visit my place of education. Rejected, once after the other. The last time that she applied, it was because I begged her to, otherwise she had totally given up. The last time she applied, I thought that whatever it was that was keeping the embassy from providing her with a visa would be solved because I'm graduating. As a push to get the embassy to provide my mom with a visa, I got the chance to meet with Hamilton's MP so she would represent my mom's case. After reviewing her case, though, the secretary just looked at me and said, honestly, Sarah, looking at your mom's file, the first thing the embassy people see is your country of citizenship. And unfortunately, Iran is a red flag right here. They're not very eager on letting people from your region here. And they didn't. Very cold-hearted, very unbelievable, but very true. So my mom, my best friend, my only reason for taking on all these challenges over the past three years is not here today. My dream has been to attend a university in the US, but now, as a Muslim girl with an Iranian citizenship, in the current political climate, I am more than ever terrified to pursue that, that route. I haven't surrendered, and I never shall, because it is my belief that our citizenship or religion shouldn't define our paths, but our perseverance and purpose in life should. So today, I have one request and one request only from you guys, my fellow graduates. I encourage you, as leaders, 
teachers, engineers, and citizens of the world to look around you and strive to change these policies, these underlying biases. Live to be more tolerant of those around you, whether they're black, white, yellow, brown, or any other skin color. Whether they're Jewish, Muslim, Christian, Baha'i, Hindu, atheist, or any other religion. I have been fortunate enough to have lived in a diverse community for more than three years, such as CICs. My friends come from Malaysia, Rwanda, Nigeria, Ukraine, Mexico, Russia, and so many other countries. But we all share so many of the same values and dreams and desires of achieving greatness and changing this world to a better place. Our similarities far outweigh our differences. So if we have built a community based on love, peace, and trust, why can't we change the whole world to be the same? Grade 10. Grade 10 history was a class I really couldn't find the purpose in, up until now. <laughs> yeah, took me a while. Sometimes it feels like history is repeating itself, though. We study history not to let mistakes of the past haunt us again. Unfortunately, looking at the current situation in the US and many other European countries, many European countries, so many connections can be made, most of which are not very pleasant to think about. The refugee crisis, the rise of white nationalists and supremacists are all events which led me to think if all the hatred is only getting stronger. But then, isn't it supposed to be the other way around, based on the era we live in? Globalization, for example, has never been so real as it is today. You know, we're mixing up more than ever with current technology, making traveling and communication more convenient than ever before. On the other hand, climate refugees are going to become the next reality for Western countries. Coming from an area such as Dubai, I can guarantee you that desertification, climate change, and water shortage are all real things and are becoming tangible more than ever. So we need to be more tolerant and accepting than ever. But let's be frank. Why am I mentioning these intense topics today? I really didn't mean to depress you on such a glorious day with my speech by rambling on about all these realities. Because there's nothing to be depressed about. The purpose of my speech is to get you guys all mad and worked up and to channel that energy to change everything for the better. Because I believe in all my heart that as graduates of Columbia, with world-class education, it is our sole responsibility to try and turn things around before it's all too late. While each of us has spent different lengths of time at CIC, I am sure all of us have witnessed the cultural diversity. In my mind, we represent a mini globe with people of different backgrounds, cultures, religions, from all walks of life. At CIC, we have lived a life of peace and friendship and tolerance. So, I repeat myself once again. If we did it here at CIC, why can't we, as citizens of the world, do the same at the global level? Thank you. <laughs>